Could the United Kingdom be dragged into a war with Russia, World War III? Well, that's what Vladimir Putin apparently thinks. Guys, welcome to the channel, The Mars Survivalist, and being better prepared is what we try to do here by knowing what's going on in the world. And what's going on is very complicated. We're looking at a very difficult time, especially in this international conflict where we have you know, many aspects. This is already uh, World War III, in which you have Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, all fighting in one way or another in Europe. They're attacking right now Ukraine. This could be the start. It definitely could not be the end of it all. So we will have to wait and see how it continues to develop. Vladimir Putin chilling threat to drag Britain into war, into Ukraine war with new hazel missiles. All right. So this is something that you would expect from Vladimir Putin. The idea, don't get involved, don't help these Ukrainians because, yeah, if you if you help them, we will come after you too. Is that a real thing? Well, uh, no, most likely no. He's not an idiot. Yeah, he's a, a, a dictator, make no mistake. He's probably a horrible human being, no doubt. But he's not an idiot. He's not likely at all to attack a NATO country, a NATO ally at all. Especially not with Donald Trump just being elected. The smartest thing for him to do would be to wait it out until he has the man in the office, in the White House, and negotiations starts, and then see what kind of offer is being made. That would be the most, the smartest, most reasonable thing. Now, at the same time, Ukraine is using this time to do as much damage to Russia so as to when that moment comes, they can say, well, you know what? <laughs> I can just do this all day long. I can just throw missiles at you and just blow the crap out of you and you will not do a damn thing because you will not cause your own destruction by starting a, a thermonuclear war with the entire world with all of NATO allies. You will not do that. So you just don't have much here to do. I will keep on throwing missiles at you and we will have to reach an agreement that is far more enticing the way I see it in terms of Ukraine, right? So this is a very complicated thing. Now, in terms of how much is likely the case of UK being dragged into this, how much involved is it already? Well, the weapons provided by UK have been used. Now, it is interesting how this is all over the media all of a sudden, but apparently no one noticed that weapons provided by UK are already actively be not only weapons, but troops, support of any kind, enormous fortunes, tons of money are being supplied to not Ukraine, but Israel in the destruction of Gaza, which is now complete, and the destruction of Lebanon, and apparently now the one going on in Syria. And apparently no one has a problem with that, right? Well, yeah, I don't like it, but I don't feel that there's any threat to me, uh, unlike in the case of Russia, and that's a valid position. Uh, but at the same time, you also have to take into account how much of a threat is Gaza to the average Brit. I assume it's zero. How much of a threat is Russia to the average European anywhere, including UK? Well, I would say it's a lot more. They have this tendency to invade and conquer. And if they just get away with conquering Ukraine, and this is something Zelensky definitely wants you to consider is, well, what comes next? Um, well, they, they could be okay with just Ukraine. Oh, all they want is... Well, no. If you listen to what this man has always said, he wants to rebuild the Soviet Empire. So it's going to be Ukraine, it's going to be Poland, it's going to be all of those former uh, Soviet bloc countries that he probably would like to include again. So how far can you go? How much can you go? Well, and again, it is this point of um, maybe it's beneficial. Maybe if... Now that UK is no longer in the EU, in the European Union, a weaker Europe, yeah, even though, you know, in terms of geo in, geographically speaking, UK is very much part of Europe. Just because you're an island, you still belong to a continent, and that continent is called Europe. So yes, British people are Europeans. <laughs> I know that's a, that's a triggering thing, but it's insane that a lot of people don't even think of it that way. What continent? Let me know. I know that you guys... A lot of my audience is, is British. Let me know what continents are you in. Let me know that. What continent? Is, are you American? Are you in the American continent? Are you African? Let me know what continent it is because that's always funny. Uh, uh, a funny conversation to have. I, I love reading those replies. Uh, now, getting serious. Um, so, yeah. Not being in the European Union and a weaker Europe means you have better. You will still not have the leverage 
stress we have. Um, you know, the, the cost, the, the pros and cons of having a Europe in war, in which you are already, even though you're not in the economic group, is still tremendously, you know, bad for UK. No matter how, no matter what way you want to cut and slice it, in terms of borders, in, in terms of active war, in, in terms of the economic disaster for the entire region, these things affect beyond those. Oh, but in case of the US, that's something that it could benefit, as I said before. So, where is it that, that UK ends up here? Well, uh, I think that some support is, is going to be needed um, in terms of, of you doing your part of trying to stop the Russian threat. Uh, you definitely cannot be an ally of Russia. That is certainly a no-no. Being, uh, being a, a little a Switzerland of, ah, oh, I'm not involved either way, that's going to be complicated because as a NATO member, yeah, that's going to be uh, outweighing the European Union uh, Brexit thing, right? So it's going to be difficult not to be dragged along. Now, how dangerous is it if UK or the rest of Europe is dragged along into a, a more uh, involved conflict with, uh, with, UK, with, with Russia? I honestly think that the mistake would be to let these guys, these thugs, these criminals get away with it and be encouraged to take even more, right? I do believe that what uh, is being said about, yeah, this would be the first to fall is true because that's what historically has been proving. I'm a firm believer in if, if you've done it before, you will do it again. And Russia has done this before and it's doing it again. And then they did it again. They took over Georgia or as much of it as they could. If it was for them, they would have taken all of Georgia. They couldn't. They, they took what they could. Uh, Moldova, same thing. Wherever he can, he just reaches out. And when he finds weakness, he grabs. And the more weakness he sees, the more he grabs. I would not let him grab anything. I would, I would stop him right there. It would have, it should have been done. It should have been stopped a long time ago, even before the invasion of Ukraine. When he started going after countries around him, that should have been at, you know, everything else is going to the NATO alliance and you touch any of this and you're fucked. And that would have stopped him on his tracks for sure. Uh, but no, it was it was good business. It was good business to see more conflict go on. It was good business. The the fear, the debilitating of uh, economic adversaries, all of that was beneficial for U.S. for players within Europe and so on. And yeah, that's where we are now, guys. It's all for now. See you on the next video. Take care.